Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for being here on Valentine's Day, Tuesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. Hope it's a great one. Today, we've got a three-round mock draft from NFL.com that we're going to take a gander at. Break down the picks for the Jaguars in that three-round mock draft from Chad Reuter, who does a great job doing player profiles, doing scouting reports, and, of course, mock drafts over at NFL.com. Been reading him for years and years, probably closer to decades at this point. But uh, fantastic job. I highly encourage anybody anybody watching to go check out the entirety of that three-round mock draft over on NFL.com. And you can also check out Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft, which is not three rounds yet. Uh, But you can check out his first-round mock draft. I think Charles Davis and Cynthia Freeland also have mock drafts. And the reason I think it is important, if you are a fan of the draft, if you are a fan of the Jaguars, to really digest as many mock drafts as you can, is to see all these different possibilities, all these different ways that things could shake out. And uh, I think it just helps you think about the process in a more open-minded way. And so when I look at these picks for the Jaguars today, again, in rounds one through three from Chad Reuter over on NFL.com, I'm not going to be looking at them, judging them based on, is this the pick I would make? I want to talk about them in context to what I think Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson and company could be looking for this offseason when it comes to the NFL draft. And it's also important at this point, again, it's only February 14th, free agency has not happened yet. Teams have not started bringing back their own players yet. Things will change from this point, but the jumping off point right now is what the current rosters look like. And the Jaguars' current roster, there's no Evan Ingram, there's no Jawan Taylor, there's no Arden Key, Dewan Smoot. Shaquille Griffin's still on the roster. So things are going to change, right? Things are going to change over the next month or so in Jacksonville, and mock drafts will continue to reflect that. But at this point, all all these mock drafters have to go off is what the current rosters look like, the current state of these rosters. And so with that in mind, I'd like to go ahead and jump in to what Chad Reuter has the Jaguars doing in this three-round mock. Excited to get into it. Love to hear what y'all think about this. You can hit me up on Twitter, at Jordan DeLugo. You can also leave a comment in the comment section below on YouTube. Really appreciate y'all's support. Uh, Could not be doing this without y'all. Full stop. So let's go ahead and get into it with the 24th overall pick in the first round of the 2023 NFL draft. Chad Reuter has the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Cam Smith, redshirt junior cornerback out of South Carolina. Chad Reuter says Smith is a tough minded corner who does not back down from SEC receivers and makes plays on the ball, which is the type of defender the Jaguars need opposite Tyson Campbell. So, Camp Smith at 24 overall. Do I think this makes sense for the Jaguars? Yeah, I do. Obviously, at this point, Shaquille Griffin is still on the roster. You have Tyson Campbell. You have Darius Williams. But we can all expect that Shaq is going to move on. It's going to be best for him and best for the team. Um, So, you've got Tyson. You've got Darius that you feel good about. Chad says they need a tough-minded corner opposite Tyson Campbell like Camp Smith. I think Darius Williams is your starting corner in 2023 opposite Tyson Campbell. Barna, like I, I just, I don't see any way around that with how well he played after you put him at the position he actually has played throughout his entire career, right? The Jaguars started him out at nickel. Um, and then after Shaquille Griffin's injury, they kind of played around with different lineups. They finally locked him in. I think around week 12, week 14 maybe, um, Darius Williams locked him in outside, and then he was one of the best outside corners in the league uh, over the last you know, couple months of the season. So I think you keep Darius Williams out there. You signed him to a, uh, it wasn't a huge contract last offseason, about $10 million a year, but you signed him to a starter's deal. You keep him outside, in my opinion. You bring in Cam Smith. Can he play nickel for you while you uh, wait for him to develop into your starting outside cornerback? Because Darius Williams, he is going to be 30 years old. I don't think he is going to be like the long-term 
five-year starter in Jacksonville at cornerback opposite Tyson Campbell. But I do think you want him to play out his contract, at least play out the 2023 season and see how that goes. So if you bring in Cam Smith here, can he play nickel for you? The answer, I believe, is yes. Uh, He had over 180 snaps at nickel this past year, 196, in fact, snaps in the slot for the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks. So if you bring him in at 24, does he make sense with your current team build? Because what we've seen a lot with this Jaguars organization is they've kind of brought in some guys that overlap each other and they haven't really made the most sense from a roster construction standpoint when you talk about the linebacker position, especially off-ball linebacker. But uh, I think if you bring Cam Smith in, he does bring in a different skill set, and I do think he has the feet, the quickness, certainly the toughness and the aggressiveness to play in the slot at the next level. He's going to be about six foot, maybe a tad under six foot, uh, probably in the 185 to 190 range at the Combine. I think he's going to run pretty well in the 4-4. is nothing crazy. But I think, again, his fluid hips and feet quickness, physicality, and ball skills. Like, he has tremendous, uh, tremendous ball skills, does Cam Smith. I think he's a guy that can come in and make you an, a, a team that can take a, a, another step forward in terms of being able to force turnovers. And Chad's right. He did it at the highest level against SEC competition consistently. So would I be a fan of this pick at 24? Yeah. Do I think it makes sense for the Jaguars at 24? Yeah, I do. Uh, I have a first round grade on Cam Smith. He's currently, where is he on my big board? I think he's right around this, this range here. Where is he? Disappeared somehow from the big board. Oh, there he is. 20. I have him 20th overall. I have a late first on him. Uh, He's not a perfect prospect. He's been grabby. He was heavily penalized in 2022 uh, for the Gamecocks. Had, I think, 10 penalties, something like that, which obviously you're going to need to improve upon that. You just got to be a little bit less grabby. And I think with with the Jaguars coaching staff, they can certainly develop this kid and, and get him to a place where he should be competing for the starting nickel job in in, in, um, in training camp. And depending on how the Jaguars address their cornerback position, maybe he's just outright the starting nickel from the get-go, kind of like how Devin Lloyd was a starter immediately for the Jaguars uh, th- this past year. They just inserted him into the starting lineup pretty much immediately on um, next to Foya Luke. And he, of course, dealt with the, the uh, hamstring injury that held him back a little bit, but could you go ahead and do that with Cam Smith type of player as well? I think you could. Uh, and I think it would be a really high quality pick. And again, a guy that brings that physicality, that alpha mindset to the defense. I think you need more guys that have that really, uh, that dog in them, you know? And and bringing in Cam Smith would certainly represent getting a guy that has the alpha mindset, that has that dog mentality, that he's dis- he feels disrespected when you throw the ball his way. Uh, that's just how he plays the game. Aggressive, physical. Can he improve his tackling slightly? Yes, but overall you like uh, the physicality he brings as a as a pursuit player and as a run defender. So yeah, I think this would be a really fun pick for the Jaguars. I think he would bring personality, enthusiasm, energy to that field. And, um, and I think it could be a really good fit. And the great thing too is you don't project him as only a slot corner. You project him as a as a starter outside down the road. So once Darius Williams' contract is up, or once you feel like you're ready to move on and get and get Cam Smith in the starting lineup on the outside, you have that uh, transition that he can make, you know, in 2024 or 2025, whatever it may be. And hey, look, if you have an injury at outside corner. This is a guy who not only can play nickel for you, but can play outside. So I think there's a lot of ways that Cam Smith does make sense for the Jaguars here at 24 overall. And I I think it would be a fine pick. Is it the the pick that I would make right here? Probably not. There's there's probably a couple guys here on my board that are a little bit higher than Cam Smith. But getting a a first round grade at 24 is big. Uh, And you say, well, why would be getting a first-round grade at 24 overall, which is 
Jordan, it's in the first round. Why is that big? Because even though there are 32 first round draft picks usually, and this year there's only 31 because of the Dolphins' uh, off field mishaps that the NFL penalized them for. So there's 31 draft picks in the first round this year, right? I have 21 first round grades. So when I'm saying a first round grade, that doesn't mean it's a top 32 guy. It means it's a top 21 guy for me right now if you have a first round grade. Uh, So that's my point here when I'm saying Cam Smith, who has a first round grade for me, getting him at 24 overall in this class, which is a little light on first round grades overall, in my opinion, it would be it would be a heck of a pick. Now, right after that, you have Jalen Hyatt, Tennessee speedy receiver who gave Cam Smith hella problems and the rest of the college football landscape problems throughout the year. He was an absolute menace. They have him going at the next pick, 25th overall, to Baltimore. So these are kind of the things you do have to think about looking at the players that get drafted around the pick you're making. Do I think Cam Smith elevates your team more than Jalen Hyatt would? I think that's up for debate. But I do like the pick of Cam Smith for the Jaguars at 24 overall. Getting into the second round, Reuter has the Jaguars taking Tucker Craft out of South Dakota State at 56 overall. Really talented tight end. He's a lot of fun. Uh, Weight room warrior. I think he's going to do some really impressive things at the combine from a testing standpoint. He has um, he has reliable hands. They've improved throughout his college career. I think he's a type of guy that is more in like the Michael Mayer role or, or mold than the than the Luke Musgrave mold. And what I mean by that is more of a a balanced tight end who who can really have a big impact for you as a blocker and as a receiver, but might not have the elite like 4440 that you're looking for that a guy like Luke Musgrave might bring to the table. Uh, so I think that Tucker Craft would certainly make sense for the Jaguars. Again, we don't know what's going to happen with Evan Ingram, uh, who if the Jaguars do bring Evan Ingram back, I think you take tight end off the board really in the first two to three rounds. Uh, e- even though they'll probably need some depth in that situation, they do have Luke Farrell still. I just don't think if you bring Evan Ingram back at a premium price at the tight end position that you're looking at 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 drafting a tight end on day two of the draft. I would not really see that as very likely for the Jaguars. But again, right now, we don't know what's going to happen with Evan Ingram. He's tweeting about New York last week. Who knows where he's going to end up? Current roster, does Tucker Craft make sense at 56 overall? Big time for me. And, you know, same school that that, uh, Dallas Goddard comes from, and you don't want to scout the helmet too much. But it is interesting when a school starts to have a pipeline at a certain position a little bit. And South Dakota State's put out NFL talent every single year uh, for for quite some time now. I think Tucker Craft is going to be a day two pick. I I have a second round grade on him, so landing him here would make sense for me. I think it would make sense uh, from a – roster construction standpoint I think that the Jaguars would like the athleticism and physicality that he can bring to the position I'm excited to see how he tests in Indy in Indy next month but I think he would make a lot of sense could come in be a reliable set of hands for Trevor Lawrence and help you in the run game and help you as an as an inline blocker so I think that landing a guy like Tucker Craft at 56 definitely makes sense And that's assuming, right, Luke Musgrave's gone. Michael Mayer's gone. Darnell Washington, gone, right? Um, uh, I definitely don't have Tucker Craft rated above those types of players. And I haven't actually seen where he pegged. uh... Where he pegged Darnell Washington to go. Yeah, 39 overall, Washington comes off the board. I believe he had Luke Musgrave coming off the board in round one. Michael Mayer coming off the board in round one. Actually, Luke Musgrave, 33 overall to the Houston Texans. Uh, So, sending him to a division rival. You don't love to see that, but it is what it is. I think getting Tucker Craft is a decent consolation prize there. And again, he might be able to be more effective as a balanced tight end, as a three-down tight end, as a tight end that no matter what we're running, you're not coming off the field. And that type of player is incredibly valuable. 
Moving into the third round. A really fun pick, I think, uh, in the third round for the Jaguars. Jordan Battle, Alabama safety. He's a senior um, at 88 overall. I think this would be a tremendous pick. And I know you're like, well, safety. We've got Rayshon Jenkins, who we like a lot. We've got Andre Sisco, who we like a lot. What are we doing with a safety in the third round? Rayshon Jenkins is fairly expensive, right? You're paying him starter money. Um, he's a good football player. How long do you want to pay Rayshon Jenkins? I don't know. But maybe you bring in a guy like Jordan Battle here at 88 overall, and he is a strong safety candidate, in my opinion, plays the game in that way. Maybe you bring him in here, not to take away Rayshon Jenkins' job or anything, but you know, add some depth at safety, and maybe he develops into a guy that could could uh, challenge for a starting role in 2024. Heck, maybe he could challenge a starting role in 2023. I think Jordan Battle is a second round safety for me, a guy that is a consistent tackler at the position, a guy that is consistent. In his assignments at the position, he has good size at 6'1", about 205. And a ton of experience at the college level for Alabama. This guy has played in 12 games in 2019, 12 games in 2020, 15 in 2021, 13 in 2022. He's picked off passes every single year. Uh, he, he's I wouldn't call him an enforcer. But I would say he's a sound tackler that can lay the wood. There's plenty of examples on tape of of, of Jordan Battle uh, leaving a mark when he gets to the ball carrier. Plenty of examples of that. And so I think this is a guy who improves your football team from day one as your third safety. And potentially, I w- I'm telling you right now, I would not be shocked if Jordan Battle came in and earned a starting job in 2023. Now, would you prefer to draft a player at a position where you feel like there's a clearer path to a starting job in 2023? I can understand that, but purely from a value perspective, from a adding talent to this roster, making this roster as talented as it can be, do I think adding Jordan Battle in the third round makes a ton of sense? I, I really do. Again, He is a second-round pick on my board. Where do I have him? I have him at 80 overall. And for for reference, I said I had only 21 first-round grades. Right now, my second-round grades extend from my 22nd overall player all the way to the early 80s. And I do have Jordan Battle squarely in that second round, uh, second round grade, second round area. So a guy that would be a lot of fun. Are there other options the Jaguars are going to have? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first three days of this draft, or excuse me, the first two days of this draft, first three rounds of this draft, it's going to be fascinating to see what the Jaguars do. There's so many different options, so many different ways that they could either fill in a need or or just try to level up at a position where they're already strong. Um, There's a lot of different ways they can play it. And so I can't wait to see what they do. We've got quite a bit of time between now and the draft. It's Tuesday, February 14th. The draft is not till end of April, but we will have uh, free agency coming up in March. We will have the uh, combine in less than a month. So there will be some fun things coming up the pike. I'm ready for it. Can't wait to see what the Jaguars do. Again, in this three-round mock draft from Chad Reuter, the Jaguars selected Cam Smith at 24 overall, who I think would come in and and probably lock down your starting nickel spot in year one. So that would be very exciting. One of the biggest weaknesses the Jaguars had in 2020, uh, in 2022 was the nickel spot. So getting him in here in year one, and uh, locking down that nickel spot for you in 2023 would be huge. Getting Tucker Craft in the second round out of South Dakota State I think is another big win. I have a second round grade on him. You've already got Luke Musgrave, Michael Mayer, and Darnell Washington off the board. Go get Tucker Craft, who I do think is the fourth best tight end in this class. Maybe 
potential to rise past that beyond that point. Again, small school guy, not as much attention on him as some of the other guys, but I like Tucker Craft a lot. And then Jordan Battle in the third come in and he definitely solidifies your safety room. He makes you a lot deeper at the position and he might just be able to come in and, and compete for a starting job from day one. I think he has that much talent and that much consistency and professionalism uh, coming out of Alabama. Have, being a four-year starter, uh, a player who played a ton of football for Nick Saban, those are the type of guys you kind of want. And he's a leader. He's just one of those steady-as-he-goes types of players. So I think getting him in the third round would be fantastic. Now, obviously, this does not address anything that's going to happen on the third day of the draft, rounds four through seven. I've got a mock draft of my own coming out soon for the Jaguars. That will be a seven-round mock draft that will address every single pick that the Jaguars have. So you can look forward to that later in the week. But that's going to do it for the show here today on Duval Daily. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about these picks in the comment section below. You can also hit me up on Twitter, at Jordan DeLugo. A couple other notes. Jaguars signed their reserve future contracts uh, on Monday. They announced a bunch of those. If you want to see who those are, you can go check out at Jordan DeLugo on Twitter. I uh, shared all those guys. Kevin Austin, newsflash, will be back. Wide receiver one, right? Uh, (laughs) No, I jest, obviously, but... uh, you know, 2022, it was a weird offseason. People out here legitimately campaigning for an undrafted free agent wide receiver to be wide receiver one, Kevin Austin. It's fun stuff, but uh, nonetheless, go check out that list, and you can check out all our other content here on YouTube or on your podcast platform of choice. Really appreciate y'all's support, Duval. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and enjoy Valentine's Day.